Okay, today we're going to do a lab. Um, there is uh, already a good bit of write-up for you. You're going to click here and that will take you to this. Um, the first thing we're going to do is just hang a 100 gram mass from this, let it go, and observe what happens as it oscillates. Now this spring is more like a real life spring. You can see that the amplitude is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. We, we've turned some of the mechanical energy into thermal energy. Um, so there's some things we need to do to set this up. We're going to make it a perfect spring. So we hung the mass on there and observed the oscillation. If I just do that again, we can see here that it has picked some time in there. It's got some kinetic energy, some gravitational potential energy above the zero, actually a good amount. Um, some spring potential energy because the spring is stretched. We've already lost some energy to thermal energy uh, because the spring is not a perfect spring. And we're going to make the spring a perfect spring by getting rid of the damping. And then if you read through here, we just, it says press pause. I did press pause already. Um, we're going to move the damping slider to none. I just did that. Move this over here. That makes it a perfect spring. We're going to click this. That tells us where the spring was at its relaxed length. And then the mass equilibrium is this black line that will come up when you put this here. Um, that's where this thing would hang if we were to lower it gently. Uh, you can um, press play and it's, um, it'll might vibrate here. And since there's no damping, it'll go forever. It's going to say, uh, now this procedure is written as if we were going to do this in class. The parentheses are things we need, we need to do because it's a simulation. So we're going to gently lower the spring or the uh, mass until it hangs. It's really hard to get it there. So we can just press the stop sign button. Even if um, you know it's going like this, we just press the stop sign. It hangs it uh, there from it. Then we're going to pull out a uh, ruler and measure five centimeters downward amplitude. And we're going to use a stopwatch. It works like this. Pull out the ruler. I'm going to put it here. Um, we need this paused actually so I can uh, pull this down otherwise it, you know if I if it's not paused uh, and I let go it, it'll start moving right now so I have to pause the simulation we're gonna bring out a stopwatch and then um, even if even if I press play right now the stopwatch is not going to start running because time has stopped we've pressed pause so if I press play here it'll start counting okay so I'm gonna reset this I'm gonna pull this back down to five centimeters and then I'm going to press play here first on the stopwatch. Time is stopped. And then I'm going to count 10 oscillations of this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And I could actually stop it here. I could keep going to 10 and just try to hit this. If you really want to be particular, since it's a simulation, you can use the little frame by frame button here and get it to... Somewhere in here, it stops about 8.11. Okay, and then there is a spreadsheet here uh, that already has this all set up for you. So you're going to come and put that in 8.11. And you'll do the same thing now, except um, you are going to change the amplitude. So pull it down from 5 centimeters to 10 centimeters. Reset stopwatch. Um, press play here. And you could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and just try to grab it. Um, or you can do the frame by frame. It should work perfectly, right? Because it's a simulation. And you're do the same thing, but you're going to increase it. The amplitude. You're going to go down to fifteen, and then down to twenty, fit twenty-five, and thirty, and measure the time it takes for ten oscillations. Later in here, we will divide that by ten. Um, to get a period, right? So 8.11 divided by 10 is 0.811 for the period. That is the first experiment. Our goal is to figure out what's the relationship between the period and the amplitude. The next experiment, we're not going to change the amplitude. We're going to leave the amplitude at 20 centimeters, but we're going to change the mass. So take this down to 50 um, and press. It's important here to let it hang first. Make sure to go through the steps on the procedure. Um, I'm not going to spend too long getting this perfect, but we're going to get this all 20 centimeters. Um, and then we'll press play on the, oh, maybe I will spend the time. Okay. Oh, I didn't press pause. Rats. Okay. Down to 20. Reset this, press play, count the time, uh, measure the time it takes for 10 oscillations. And then you will change this back to 100. 
Uh, realize, though, that when you change this, the equilibrium spot has changed. So you're going to have to move your um, ruler you know, to the bottom of this. Hopefully I did the other one correctly. Move this down 20 centimeters. Reset this. Press play. Time, how long it takes for 10 oscillations. Uh, let me just show, see if I did the other one correctly. If we go back to 50, maybe I didn't do that correctly. I was supposed to start from here. If I didn't start from there, uh, I'll have to look back at the video. You can look back at it. Um, there, tick. Oh, I didn't press, I didn't press play. Didn't press play. So stop, reset. You'll get the hang of it after a while. Okay, the time for 10 oscillations. And you'll change the mass from 50 up to 300 grams, and you'll put those numbers in here. We'll talk about this, these graphs a little bit later. And the last thing you're going to do, so six, six times for changing the amplitude, six times for changing the mass, six times for changing the gravitational field, which would be really pretty weird to do in real life, um, but we can. So we're going to take this, um, and uh, I'll just use the slider. It, we're going to go by about 1.6. So... 1.6, 3.2, 4.8. Um, now, if you'll notice, when I do this, it changes the spot. If I make G big, right, then gravity's large, and the equilibrium spot comes down because gravity's pulling down hard. If I, I make gravity small, the equilibrium spot becomes smaller, or a shorter distance, and I think I'm already there, right? Yeah, I'm already there. So I move it downward, it'll vibrate, go back to there. And measure 20 centimeters. Let's see, press pause, press start, go down 20 centimeters. Oh, actually, the mass is supposed to be 100 grams. Uh, and then, oh, this is not at this zero spot. There we go. Pause, reset. That may not be perfectly on the zero. I'm trying to get this video done here for you. Get this down to 20 centimeters. Press play. Measure the time it takes for 10 oscillations. So that is the 18 data points you're going to get six times for each one of those three experiments. I did the last experiment for you. What I did was this. Um, took the 100 gram. I'm going to, I'm going to use the 100 gram mass. Uh, let's say I take this and I put this on here. So actually, before I put it on there, you'll notice that the spring moves downward when I hang this. So if we go like this, the spring moved from its that blue line. And if I go like this and hang it there, I can measure how far that little piece of spring right there has moved. Okay, So that little piece of spring right there, how far down does it move from that blue line? I'm going to go like this, hang it. And if I use the ruler here, um, I need to change my gravity back to Earth's gravity and then hang it. Yeah, that makes more sense. Now, how far did that little piece of spring move? That little piece of spring moved. If I bring this right over here, um, that little end there is about 33 centimeters. So I recorded that. Um, and how that helps is this. When that mass is hanging here, we know that it's spring force up equals its gravity force down. And we know m, we know g, so mg equals k delta x, the spring force. But I just measured delta x, so if you look at k here, I took m, a4, times g, c4, divided by f4 gives me k. And I did that for each one of these different um, values for the spring constant. So I did this um, and measured how far down is this little piece of spring right there from that relaxed length. So I don't know, this is what about... 11, I'm sorry, uh, that's 15, 16, about 17 centimeters. So uh, down here, which mark are we on? We're on the fourth data point. So fourth data point, one, two, three, four, 17 centimeters. So I, I calculated all these K values. And then we measured the uh, time here. Put this back. Um, so this is what you're going to do for each one. For this graph, for my graph that I did for you, this line is nowhere close to to a straight, right? It's looking going downward, uh, which kind of makes sense actually that it would be uh, going downward because if I make the spring a higher spring constant, 
And I didn't actually do a data point for this last one. It was hard to see any difference in change in length when I went from here to there. I, I couldn't really notice a, a change in length. Um, and there's a little change. There's a little change in length right here of this little black, but it was it was hard to measure. But it makes sense if k gets big when I pull this down some amount. If k is big, the spring's really going to shoot it up quickly, and when it shoots it up quickly, um, it's going to go back. It's going to take less time to oscillate back and forth. Okay. Um, so as k goes up, the period goes down. Makes sense. So over here, in each one of these, you're going to play with the exponent if you need to. If this comes out to be a straight line, you don't need to play with the exponent. It's The period is proportional to the amplitude. If it's a straight line this way, that means the period is unaffected by the amplitude. If it goes downward or something, or if it looks like it's you know curving but kind of square root-like, we got to play with this exponent. So on mine, it looks like some sort of inverse relationship. So I'm going to make this exponent minus 1. If I make the exponent minus 1, this graph down here shows me, here, uh, let me change it back to 1. This is the graph, the same as above, but there's a line of best fit through it. And it's not very linear. 0. 0.915 is not very linear. I'm going to change this to minus 1 and make it inversely proportional, the period inversely proportional to the uh, spring constant. And that didn't work. That, that works pretty well. So uh, I tried minus 2. So that's not as linear anymore. So the period is not proportional, inversely proportional to the square. And I tried minus 0. 0.5 and that 0. 0.999 now. So this is very uh, linear. So I changed the title here. I already did it. Um, I changed the title to period versus blank. You see if you notice these guys have period versus gravitational field. Leave these the same. Don't mess with these. But down here, if this you know is a square root, or something like that mess with the exponent on the G um, and you know if this were a square root we would graph um, period versus the square root of G so I'd, I'd type 0.5 right here um, and that would change this graph down here hopefully to linear um, but notice each one of these says period versus blank so I change this to period versus inverse square root of spring constant which is pretty long and then I change the uh, you can just click in here and change it up oh, sorry it's actually not easier to use this and doing the customize, just click in this box and change the title and change the um, axis here. I changed the spring constant to the negative 0.5 and the units would be newtons per meter to the negative 0.5. You can just leave it like that. Um, so I did this experiment for you. What you're going to do in your lab write-up is this. Um, do read through the procedure as you go along. Um, and it tells you we're going to, the first time you're just going to do amplitude, change the amplitude um, from 5 centimeters up to 30. In the second experiment, you're going to keep the amplitude 20 centimeters and change the masses from 50 to 300 grams. And then the last one, which is only reasonable to do in a simulation, it'd be hard to change G in real life, is to keep the amplitude 20 centimeters, keep the mass 100 grams, and vary the gravitational field. And I did number seven um, for you. I did the data for changing the spring constant. You're going to do analysis. You're going to look at these graphs that you made. Um, and you're going to put in the period versus amplitude. You're going to insert like the period versus amplitude squared or square root graph, square rooted, sorry, graph, um, was linear. This indicates that the period was proportional to the square root of the amplitude or whatever the case is, whatever you find. So um, period versus mass and period versus gravitational field. Um, and then this one, you can read this, do read this. Um, this is more analysis than I expected of you, though. Um, but in the end, the I found the period versus spring constant graph was not linear and seemed to show some sort of inverse relationship. And this is just saying why that kind of makes sense. And so I graphed it um, I, to different powers. I raised that spring constant to different powers and used the R squared value was the lowest when it was uh, the spring constant was inverted and square rooted. So raised to the minus 0.5 power. This indicates that the period is inversely proportional to the square root of the spring constant. That's the hardest one. I did that one for you. So all you're doing in here is you're going to um, change the green. Okay, put in what the relationship is. You're going to change the green down here and say what the end result is. The period is proportional to what quantities? Proportional to amplitude or amplitude squared or mass or gravitational field. Which one is it? Uh, which ones are? Is it uh, inversely proportional to? Maybe it's inversely proportional to the mass. 
inversely proportional to the square of the mass. And if it's unaffected by any of the three, you can put those down here. Um, so you're just changing the green and you're going to turn it in via Google Classroom and you're going to attach this, uh, your spreadsheet of your data to it. Please ask questions on uh, Google Classroom. Um, I will help you out. Others can help you out. Uh, hope you, I hope I made it quick and easy for you. You're going to take 18 times and see these relationships. Um, it's all set up for you. You just need to go in here, put in the data, look at this graph, change this exponent so this becomes linear, um, and then go in and change this title, period versus gravitational field squared, period versus gravitational field if it's to the first or something like that, and then change the um, access title down here for each one of these three. Okay, hope this makes sense. Um, hopefully it doesn't take you too much time. Uh, ask questions, ask questions, ask questions.